Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. Thanks for joining A Toast to the Men with your guy, S.D. Booker. Thanks for the support. Thanks for commenting. Thanks for following me. Before we get started, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Let's go. In the relationship before the relationship ends you. Important lesson, important nugget of wisdom to take heed to and to live by. Myself, I typically have no problem ending relationships. Now, there was a time in my younger days, where I, would, I ended some relationships that I had, man, since elementary, I had to end those relationships in my early 20s because they were not going in the direction I was trying to go in. And those relationships, man, that those two relationships were, were tough to uh, sever. Guys that follow me, that grew up with me, they all know exactly the two relationships I'm talking about. These relationships were hard to sever and it was difficult breaking that emotional tie and probably even a spiritual tie. Uh, so that, that, that was rough, but it had to be done because even back then in my early 20s, I knew my purpose comes first, uh, my mission comes first before any relationship. And the sooner you learn that and grasp that and embrace that, the better off you're gonna be. And when I'm talking about relationships, man, I don't care if it's uh, intimacy with, with a woman, a friendship, a platonic friendship, a family member, a job, anything, any relationship. It could be a, it could be a relationship with your pet. Your pet may be a nuisance. Man, you may have an evil spirit in your pet, and it's a nuisance causing you stress. I mean, I'm serious about that. Um, it's been known to happen. So the sooner you embrace and accept that, hey, I may have to cut off this relationship in order for me to move forward, the better off you'll be. Now, going back to when I was young, like I said, I grew up with these two guys since the second grade. And the way things work out, the way the universe worked things out for me, I started changing my thought process and my thinking. Uh, eventually went into the military, had no plans, had no desire to go into the military. Went into the military out of desperation, uh, just trying to gain focus and, and gather myself because you know I was hustling, and I was working in the warehouse, and I was like, man, this this ain't what I'm meant to do. Uh, I gotta figure this thing out. So I entered the military. <clears throat> My friends didn't believe me. I told these guys months ahead of time, hey, I'm going to the military. Man, book, you ain't going to no military. I was a hooper. That's all I, I thought about, hooping. And so uh, that didn't go, my hoop dreams didn't go the way I planned. Um, my fault, they didn't go the way I planned. And so after graduation, about a year after graduation, I decided to go into the military. Guys didn't believe me. Before you know it, that time comes. I go through uh, entry, through Fort Hood. I get shipped off to Fort Jackson, um, South Carolina, where I did basic and once we got a chance, after a few weeks, to get a chance to call home. I called those guys, and they were like, wow, man, you, you did it. You did it, man, and uh, they were shocked. So uh, that was tough because I had never been out of town on my own. I had never left home. I had never been, off, uh, been out of my neighborhood. Uh, other than with my mom going uh, to uh, trips to visit her family 
in, in Missouri. Or, uh, you know, we'll take a trip to Louisiana, stuff like that. But other than that, I've never been out of town on my own. So that was, that was different. That was new. But like I said, I've always been the type of guy that's going to put my focus, my goals, my dreams ahead of anything, ahead of any woman, ahead of any friendship, any job. And uh, that's just the way I move. But that was tough still. Um, moving forward, I get home, you know, uh, after basic AIT. Uh, still still doing the same thing, man, really. Uh, still hustling. Uh, still hanging with the same guys. And uh, just the way things turned out, man. I worked about an hour away from where I stayed. And I met this, this young girl that stayed in the suburbs, a good neighborhood, and we, we got to talking. And I'm starting to move up in corporate America, so my, my attire is changing, my, my speech is changing, my conversation is changing, and uh, I ended up moving out there. And it was just a different world. You know, I felt out of place at first, coming from the hood to the suburbs, uh, it was different. But when I would go back to the hood to visit, I noticed that, man, there was a disconnect uh, between us. Not saying I was better than those guys, but my mentality, my conversation was different. Uh, my goals were different. I didn't feel comfortable just hanging around anymore, smoking weed. Everything was changing. So I felt uncomfortable and they felt uncomfortable. And, uh, Man, the girl I was with, she used to ask me all the time, was like, man, why why must you go down there like every day? Man, I used to go down there every day after work, drive 45, to, 45 minutes to an hour just to hang with those guys because I had no connection with guys out there while I was staying in the suburbs. And I had this emotional attachment to the guys in my neighborhood who I grew up with since the second grade. And she just didn't get it. Uh, she's like, why? Why must you go down there every day? And uh, But then I started feeling more uncomfortable and I noticed they were uncomfortable around me and I just started thinking. I was like, you know, I don't fit in. I don't fit in in this environment. I don't fit in in this circle anymore. And the flip side, I didn't totally fit in in the suburbs either, right? So... I'm in this unbalanced, uncomfortable position. And so when you're in that position, don't get down, don't get depressed. That's a great position to be in because that's the time where you really need to focus on you and ground yourself and get to know you and have those conversations with yourself and get to really understand where you're at, where you're going and where you come from and, and uh, bring yourself together on a spiritual level. Uh, so that's the perfect time to be in solitude, to be alone. Uh, and I mentioned this in the book, A Toast to the Man. A man should be in solitude for for moments, limited moments, uh, to, to gather himself, to get to know himself, to speak to his higher self, uh, but only for a limited moment because it's not meant for man to be alone forever. So only for a limited moment. And then you got to break out of that solitude. Uh, but I look back and if I didn't break that emotional tie, man, it's no telling where I would be because those guys, I love them. The love will always be there, but they're not being fruitful. You know, stories get back to me about how they're doing, uh, what they're not doing with their lives. And I could possibly be right there with them, not being productive uh, and uh, not fulfilling my purpose. So, you know, I say that not to look down on those guys. I'm, I'm no better than those guys because that guy that used to kick it with those guys, that guy is still in me. 
<laughs> that's still in me. That God's still in me. That darkness is still in me. And, and or immaturity, darkness, whatever. It can still come out. But it's going to come out when I need it to come out. I'll manage it. Uh, but I've just elevated to a different level in this phase of my life. But I'm no better than those guys. Like I say all the time, they are me, I am them. We're just on different paths right now, different phases in our life. And, and that's okay. Uh, so, yeah, that could have destroyed me. That could have hindered me and cut off my growth. And I see a lot of brothers fall into that trap because they don't want to cut off the relationship. They don't want to be the first to cut off the relationship. They don't mind the relationship cutting off, but they don't want to be the one that initiates it for whatever reason. And uh, it can be scary, man. It can be uncomfortable uh, cutting off those relationships, breaking those ties. Because sometimes, you know, you may feel like, man, I may need to go back. Uh, this is my comfort zone. I may need these guys. And like I said, man, I, I kept the cordial, uh, always with them, respectful, Um but I had to go my way and, and let those guys do their thing too. Uh, I've done it uh, in relationships with women. And uh, that's that's tough, man, especially if kids are involved. It can be really tough. Uh, people hate starting over uh, in relationships, getting to know someone. Someone's learning you, you're getting to learn them, and then you got to start over. But stop putting that pressure on yourself. You don't have to be in a rush to get another relationship with a woman. Chill. Get to know yourself. Take that time to be in solitude, to get to know you, work on you and who you're supposed to be with, you will attract naturally on a spiritual level. So take your time. Now, when you have kids with a woman, that could be more difficult to cut off that tie because uh, there's so much at stake and you got other lives involved. You got families involved. So I understand that, but just know, listen, man, if she's not going in the direction you're going, she's not willing to follow, to listen, to submit under your leadership, and it's going to hinder your growth to fulfill your purpose, what you're here to do, you just got to chalk that up, man, as a, as a L, a lesson learned, and cut off that relationship. And don't worry about anything. You'll be taken care of. Everything will work itself out. Um, so, you know, I get it. But a lot of brothers lose themselves and are stagnant and don't fulfill their purpose because of fear and regret. Uh, low, you know, um, just don't want to end that relationship, man, because they got kids and family involved. And embarrassing. It can be very embarrassing, man. I know when I got a... Uh, my first divorce is very embarrassing, very embarrassing, felt like a failure. And uh, yeah, yeah, so I get it, you know, I get it. But what, what the thing is, I didn't even want to be in a relationship. You know what I'm saying? If you read the book, The Toast to the Men, I had enough. So I didn't want to be in a relationship, but I still was embarrassed because uh, I don't know if it was ego yeah, probably ego. It's just probably ego uh, looking like a failure. That was basically ego. And so uh, I had to get past that. It took me a while to get past that, actually, to admit, hey, it failed, it didn't work, and I'm okay. I'll be all right. So end the relationship before the relationship ends you. And that ending can be a number of endings. That story can end a number of ways. It could be death. It could be the end of good health, the end of good mental health, the end of good spiritual health. It could be the end of uh, of just growth, man, in every aspect, in every realm, uh, spiritual and earthly. And so, uh, yeah, in that relationship, man, step out on faith, feel good about yourself, be confident, and uh, yeah, do what you have to do. Do what's best for you in regards to you fulfilling your purpose. Don't do what's best for you from an earthly flesh, carnal perspective. Do what's best for you spiritually, where you can keep your sanity and walk within righteousness. 
another thing, be careful about who we tie ourselves to. And you can avoid a lot of this. Now, this is going to be quick because this wasn't part, supposed to be a part of the video. That's a different video, right? But this is how you determine if you should be tied to this person or not. Are they righteous? Period. Are they righteous? In their thoughts, in their actions, in their deeds. Are they led by righteousness? Or are they led by ego? Two, three years ago, I had to cut a guy off because I started seeing certain things, darkness in him. That is also a darkness in me that I've moved past, still in me, but I've moved past to a different phase in my life. But it is a darkness in me. And I saw it in him. And I said, I need to separate and distance myself from this guy, this friend, because... I know it's it. That's in me, and I can go in that same direction, and I don't want to go backwards. So I need to distance myself. So I cut that relationship off. So be careful who you tie yourself to, and and what's the thing? The thing was, the signs were there before me and this guy even got close. Even before we became cool, signs were there, but at the time. I was in a dark space, you right? The stuff I was going through when I wrote this book, I was in a dark space. <laughs> Be careful. And this guy came along in my life and we formed a friendship. Man, if I wasn't in that dark space, I man, this guy probably would have just kept it cordial, head nod and kept it moving, but it wouldn't have been a friendship. When I started coming out of that dark space, that's when my blinders came off and I started recognizing certain things. And I was like, oh, no, no, no. I got I to gotta remove myself because this guy, this guy is dark. He's in darkness. He's a dark person. And I got to disconnect myself because I know that's in me, deep inside of me. And that's going to be drawn out of me. And I don't want that. Not, I don't want that to come out with, without my okay. And if it comes out, I want to be rooted. I want it to be rooted in righteousness. Through darkness, I want to bring light. That's the only way I want my darkness to come out if I'm bringing light, right? So, for, for example, if you have to kill somebody, you want that to be in self-defense. You want that to be in you protecting someone, right? Righteously. Light. Bringing light. Not because someone stepped on your toe. Not because of ego, basically. You want to go through darkness, bringing light. So uh, that wasn't going to happen being connected to that guy. I had to cut that off. So pay attention to people and pay attention to when people come into your lives. Are they coming into your life when you're, you're down, depressed, downtrodden, in a dark, you know, dark space? Pay attention. And that could be hard to recognize and snap out of that. But it's very important because it can lead you down a treacherous road. So you got to be careful with that. Uh, cut off another relationship. A few relationships because these guys were stagnant. And they uh, were saying they wanted to do things with their life, but I didn't see any creativity. And I'm a guy that has to be creative. I have to do. I have to create. That's my personality. That's in my spirit. I've always been like that. But I started hanging around these guys more when I was in that dark space. But when I popped out of that dark space, I had uh, formed an affinity for these guys. So I was, I was telling these guys, hey, this is cool, I was hanging, but man, we need to accomplish some things. We need to, all this stuff you guys are talking about, you wanna do, let's accomplish these things. So I'm watching, I'm watching, and I'm seeing no progress. I'm seeing no progress. So I say, I was like, man, I got to I gotta cut these guys off because they're not being creative. And I don't want to get caught in that, that mode of being stagnant. They're not being creative. And the last straw was I gave this guy opportunity to showcase some work. I was going on a book run, 
a promo run for the book, A Toast to the Men. I told this guy months ahead of time, hey, I'm going to go on a press run, a promo run through New Orleans, Louisiana, New Orleans, uh, Alexandria, a few other spots in Louisiana through the media, man. So I'm going to be on the local news and, the, uh, and several radio stations. I tell you what, you didn't say you want to create this, this type of t-shirt with this logo on it that stands for, you know, whatever it stands for, I can't remember. But I liked the idea when I heard it. I said, tell you what, just go get one t-shirt made in my size and I'll wear it on national TV, man, or local TV. I'll wear it. And I'll even kick you out a shout out. So, man, this is like four months ahead. No, not four, four weeks ahead. Every week I'm reminding him. Every week I'm reminding him. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. The day comes when I got to go to Louisiana, me and my wife. And uh, I happen to run into him at the uh, the oil change spot. So we're getting the oil change before we hit the road. He's like, man, where you guys going? I said, man, I'm going to Louisiana, man, do this press run. And... Uh, I said, okay, okay. I said, so uh, what's up with the shirt? Man, never did it, man. Never got it done. I said, okay, that's cool. So, you know, we left, shook hands, left, departed. Hey, man, last time I kicked him, though, cut him off. Uh, you don't want it. You're not serious. There's no reason. There's no legitimate, righteous reason for you to be in my life, for us to be connected like that. Uh, now, if I run into him, and I have run into him, it's, it's, it's hugs, dap, catching up, hey man, how the kids, how the wife, cool. Uh, as far as us calling each other, connecting, no, nah, that's dead, because you've shown me you're not for real. And so I'm moving forward, tried to help you. I want you to move forward with me, but you're not for real, so we gotta cut that off. Uh, now, it may be a situation where he wakes up, he sees the light, and he catches up with me. Hey, man, that's cool. That's cool. Long, it, it all depends. But now, I may be, f be further off, you know, so, you know, maybe we can't really reconnect that friendship like that. But uh, it's all good, man. It's not the end all to be all. Uh, so, yeah, man, just be careful about who you connect with. Be careful about holding on to relationships, friendships, too long. Uh, I don't care, man. It could be a grown child that's bringing chaos to your home, to your life. Cut it off. Cut it off. You are not. On, you're not on this earth. Your purpose in life is not to be dealing with that stuff. It's a distraction from you going to where you need to go to. Now, kids under 18, hey, I get it. But uh, grown kids, man, don't deal with that mess. Don't deal with it. Keep it moving. Fulfill your purpose. Be comfort. Be comfortable in that. Be secure in that, that you're doing the right thing. As long as it's rooted in righteous, righteousness, you're good, man. All right? Don't get caught up. Don't get caught sleeping. All right? From me to you, love. Peace.